Good morning, everyone. This is Ranger Jake here in Yellowstone National Park. Today we're filming along the north entrance road between the north entrance, which is just north over my right shoulder here, and just south of us is Mammoth Hot Springs. So we're on that section of road that's actually closed uh, to vehicles at the moment. You can walk in from both directions, but it's closed to vehicles um, and for good reason. So if you look over my shoulder here, uh, you can see the Gardner River. It's come way, way down from when it was on June 13th, that flood event. But you can see uh, this whole riverbed where the river used to go up and over. Uh, you come down here, make a left-hand turn, and then hook back up with the road. And now the river has a completely new course. It undercut where the road used to be. So it used to just kind of continue here to this other side. Undercut the road, part of the hillside. You can see sections of road out there in the river bar, just giant boulders. You can see the infrastructure, um, you know, the, the culverts that were under the road, the drain when it rains. You can see the wastewater main that was severed. Uh, so it's a pretty significant damage down here. So, uh, but first of all, I just wanna thank everybody who's been following along for this 150th uh, uh, virtual video series that we've been doing. And for the people on social media that have been asking us when we're planning on getting this back up and running, I just want to say thank you for your patience. Um, the whole team that's a part of this, uh, this 150th virtual series, myself included, we kind of got diverted uh, to work on the emergency communication efforts with reopening the park, you know, closing it, reopening it, making sure that visitors are safe, uh, all that. So our team was temporarily diverted, so we appreciate your patience. And we apologize for the delay, um, but we had some rain here that kind of temporarily changed uh, our scheduled plan for this for this series. So normally in the series, we'll invite somebody on, uh, a subject matter expert, you know, whether it's it's been bison, uh, it's, you know, what have we talked about? We've talked about uh, a, a variety of topics, um, but normally we bring them on, they talk about the past, present, and future of their particular topic. Uh, well, today's a little bit different. Um, we're not going to have a guest speaker. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the flood on June 13th and the events that led up to that um, and just a, a few days afterwards. Uh, and from, from my perspective as the digital communications specialist. So I was one of the people on the team that documented everything. Um, and we didn't want to just jump back into the series and you know, celebrating the 150th without sort of acknowledging and, and cementing in, the, you know, in this series what took place on that day. And also just to share with you all the content that we produced that came out of there. So um, people from around the park were, you know, as the flood was taking place, were taking videos and photos and sharing them with our office. And so we thought it might be just kind of an interesting thing to do a narrated slideshow uh, to share all that content with you and the, you know, the, the morning of the flood and then, you know, the, the couple days after when we really started to get a, a good picture that the damage that had taken place on that Monday. Uh, so a little bit of background is, um, you know, you know me as Ranger Jake. I work in the superintendent's office um, in digital communications. So I'm a part of the team that communicates the priorities of the park. And, um, you know, I mentioned we were the team that was really trying to communicate what was going on, the closure efforts, you know, how we're going to reopen the park and all that. So, um, you know, I work in digital, so social media and web, but I'm also one of the people that communicates and uh or creates the content. So I did have the opportunity. I was in the park the day I wasn't outside. So I had the opportunity to go up into a helicopter the day and, and hopefully I can share a little bit of additional context to the photos because it's really cool to see the photos and what happened. But I feel like the context adds a little bit even more. So to start with, you know, the couple days leading up to that, it had started raining uh, in the area you know, the flood was on June 13th, but it really started raining in the afternoon of Saturday, um, the 11th. And the reason I noticed is because I take my dog for a walk every day. That morning we started walking. We had to come back a little early because it started raining. The next day when I went out to walk, it was still raining. And, you know, just like all people in Wyoming, you can say, hey, let's wait 30 minutes and the weather will change. Well, I ended up waiting all day and it was, you know, nine o'clock at night, I'm getting ready for bed and I realized I hadn't taken the dog for a walk because it had been raining all day. Um, and, you know, come later, what we found out is that rain that had, you know, started on Saturday, continued all through Sunday and into the early you know, hours of Monday morning, 
Um, it was two to four inches of rain throughout the northern part of the park, but it also happened to be on top of snow from a late spring season snowstorm that didn't melt. So what that means is combined rain and snow melt, we had about nine inches of rain in the northern part of the park. So in between seven and a half and nine inches of rain throughout the whole northern part of the park. Um, and that, you know, is a significant amount of rain. It's like, you know, 50% of our annual rainfall or even more than that. So um, that morning, you know, we wake up, we go to the office and we were expecting high rivers, high floods, but we immediately, our office started receiving photos from people in the field, specifically down here in the canyon. So a little bit further down river um, is where the river first started undercutting the road and we started seeing uh, the guardrail starting to come off. We started seeing a bunch of de a debris uh, pile up on the Rescue Creek footbridge, uh, which is now gone. Uh, but we immediately realized with those images that it wasn't safe to have the park open. So they closed the north, they closed the north entrance. We started getting photos and videos from the northeast entrance, so out towards Cook City, uh, same thing. The you know, roads flooding, roads utter, undercutting. Um, and so we started, you know, in our office started saying, hey, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna communicate that we're gonna close the northern part of the park? Um, then the power goes out in, in the park. And so now we're trying to operate and, you know, and to figure out how we're going to communicate with no power. Uh, thankfully, our trails crew, uh, they had a generator that we can use. So we basically all piled around this one generator, everybody that was communicating. So all the different divisions and all the people that were a part of all the different aspects of evacuating the park. And um, they all came in and we were all basically plugging all of our phones and we kind of dubbed it the mobile command center because everybody's mobile phones were plugged into this one little, the only power in the park. Um, and, you know, we, we started to communicate. We decided that we're going to close the park from all these images that we're starting to see. Uh, a lot, all that water was starting to affect our uh, wastewater systems. And we were worried, you know, that in addition to the, the line being severed down here, there were places, other areas in the park that we were worried that the, the infrastructure might go. So we decided to close and evacuate the park. Uh, fortunate enough, we had uh, we have a ship that's on contract here, so a, a helicopter for our fire crew, and they were in the middle of training, prepping for the fire season. So we had the opportunity to send up our helicopter manager, Doug Kraus, um, early afternoon, and he took what be is now basically one of the most viral videos that we've ever taken. So that initial video that you saw of this canyon behind us and just the river raging and, and cutting the road out in multiple sections. He took that video, he landed, he came back, shared it with our office um, and was like, Jake, we need, to, we need to get somebody up because this is a historic event and we need to document what's taking place. The first part of the mission was to check out Lower Blacktail uh, Cabin, which is a historic patrol cabin, which sits at the confluence of Lower Blacktail, Deer Creek and Yellowstone River. You can see the Yellowstone River is just super high. It's way over what it normally is. There's normally exposed rocks on both sides of the river. You have Blacktail Deer Creek coming up the left-hand side, and you can see the horse barn. Uh, but basically, where the two river, where the river and the creek come together, that's actually the footprint um, and the foundation of the cabin. So when we were there, <clears throat> this was first confirmation that we had that we had lost uh, the cabin uh, to the flood. Uh, we went further out uh, to check on another cabin, which is along Hell Roaring Creek, and this is at the base of Hell Roaring Mountain. Uh, and as we did a couple loops around from the air, we could see that the cabin was still there, although the it did appear that the creek came up high enough where it might have hit the cabin, um, but it looked like it was still intact and there wasn't any worry with that one. From the cabin there, we continued on and followed the Yellowstone River until it met up with the confluence of the Lamar River. Uh, we call this Yelmar, the Yelmar Trail, but you can see in the distance in this photo, you have the Yellowstone River, which is you know running up and down in the center of the photo underneath the Yellowstone River Bridge. Um, and then you have the Lamar River running from left to right uh, in the bottom of the photo. This photo right here is the confluence of Slough Creek and Lamar River. Slough Creek is much more turbulent. There's a lot of white water in there, but you can see the difference in the colors of the turbidity. And I think that's because a lot of the debris that was coming from Lamar River, there was a lot of silt and sand and the water is just really, really dark brown. Um, but we continued on to follow up uh, Slough Creek 
And as we got closer to the campground turnoff, you can see right here that this is less of a creek and more of a lake. Uh, there's a, a pinch point in the canyon which Slough Creek has to go through and then after that it opens up into this wide area. So on the flight we continued past Slough Creek continuing east until we flew through Lamar River Canyon. There was a couple places that were starting to severely cut bank. If, if these sections of of river weren't as straight as they were in most places. We're pretty confident that that would have undercut the road and we would have lost it there too. And then out into Lamar Valley proper. And normally, you know, you have a few different channels and they're kind of braiding their way through this just expansive valley. Um, and it was completely filled the river and over on the banks in some places. I mean, it was just a lot of water in the system at this time. And um, I think the time that we were flying, it was past the crest. So the height of the water, you know, of this particular river, Lamar River had already come down um, from its high point, but it was still just raging. You can see in both of these photos. Uh, as we continued up Lamar River, eventually we came across uh, the confluence of Lamar and Soda Butte Creek. Soda Butte is on the left, uh, Lamar River on the right, continuing up Lamar Valley. It's another view from the same confluence, just looking um, a little as we're flying up Soda Butte Creek, looking back towards the confluence, so in the opposite direction. Um, and then continued on uh, along Soda Butte Creek, you can see Soda Butte, the feature itself, down in the bottom of the picture with bison. And then as we continued a little bit further out, we got to the Trout Lake Trailhead. Uh, and this is the first section of the road that we confirmed had really washed, washed away significantly. Um, you know, you can see from this angle, also from this angle here, just lots and lots of uh, material from that hillside removed away. The road was undercut by, you know, tens of feet. Uh, that that river channel of Soda Butte Creek uh, went way off what its normal route was. So we continue on until we get up to Soda Butte Creek and the confluence of Pebble Creek. So this right here on the left-hand side of the photo, this is the Pebble Creek campground and the road. Um, you know, the campground is just out of the photo. But you can see in this photo, this is the road to take you into the campground and it's completely flooded. We have um, in this shot, this is our volunteer campground hosts that, um, you know, were stranded. We were able to get contact with them early in the morning via radio. We knew that they were safe, they had supplies, whatever they needed, um, but they were unable to go in either direction because the road had cut off uh, to the east of them, which are these photos right here, and then also behind them at Trout Lake Trailhead. Uh, but these two sections of road here and here, uh, both of these um, are east of uh, Pebble Creek Campground, but not yet all the way to the northeast entrance. So after that initial flight, we came back, we're able to edit those photos and share it with uh, you know, news media and on social media exactly what was going on. Uh, we started, we you know, decided that we we're gonna document from the ground uh, once it was safe, you know, what sort of damage we were looking at. Uh, so this shot right here is from the north entrance, just south of the north entrance uh, near Rescue Creek Trailhead. Uh, this is the first section of road that's gone as you're heading into the park from the north entrance. Uh, you can see the wastewater main that was under the under the road that's been washed away. This shot right here shows, uh, you know, one of the many culverts that were under the road that as the road was undermined, you have some of them are still intact. Some of them are washed down river. This photo right here is where we're filming today. Um, again, Gardner River Canyon. This is the southernmost section of the road that was washed out on the north entrance road. Um, this view right here is another, it's the same place except from uh, the vantage point is across uh, Gardner River looking back towards the road. Uh, there's a hill on that same side where I took this picture, which you also have this vantage point looking down Canyon. And you can see with all those bends in the river, just it, you know, it washed out in a few different places. This shot right here, you can see the culverts that run to the road, uh, just as we get water coming down off the surrounding hillsides to go under the road, you can see all the infrastructure that was, you know, the, the wastewater main. And this is an aerial shot of just, you know, showing as the river came down, um, how far off course it was in order to, 
to really wash out the road in those sections. Boiling River is a really popular spot that people have been asking about. So this right here, this vantage point is a Boiling River trail. If, you, if you're walking out to the place where you get into the water, um, this is you know, along the trail that's been washed out. It's kind of hard to tell from this vantage point, but from the other side of the trail from the washout, you can see that this section of uh, this from this picture, you have the trail that's coming up from the bottom um, and the river just completely undercut the whole trail. And this aerial fo uh, photo right here shows it even better. You can just see that whole section of trail has been completely washed away. Or the other thing that was really of significance is that the river has changed course almost, you know, it's way over on the opposite side of the river. This aerial shot right here, you can see the all these rocks that are right near the trail. All that used to be underwater. That used to be the main channel. Um, you know, the whole idea is that hot water dumps into cold river water and it mixes and makes it a tolerable temperature. And that's where you're legally allowed to soak in Yellowstone. But now, because the river's so far offside, the only way to really get in to the river is, you know, to find a, a place that you would soak is significantly further downstream uh, than where, you know, all of the infrastructure that we built currently is. So um, that was really interesting to see, too, firsthand. Uh, some other infrastructure, a footbridge that takes you to Lava Creek Footbridge. This uh, is a really popular trail in the north part of the park at the base of Mount Everts. There's some backcountry access, but now you really can't get across the river. It's an aerial, the, you know, the bridge is still there, but it's been severely damaged. This shot right here is a Lost Creek footbridge. This is behind Roosevelt Cabins, um, just another popular day hiking trail. Here's a, a viewpoint of the entire layout of the cabin trail. So Lost Creek that flows from the, the you know, behind the lodge. There's a little waterfall back there. Further out, you go to uh, Slough Creek Campground. Um, you know, most of the damage in Slough Creek Campground is, I would say, cosmetic. It's just like digging out fire pits and moving things. But there were a few uh, big stackups of trees like this. So there's a, a picnic table somewhere in that clump of trees. As we continue further east, this is the areas of the park that we were kind of worried about. The road had not been washed away, but the cut bank was pretty severe. And you can see in this picture right here, that's like a 30 foot hillside uh, that's been cut bank uh, pretty severely. Here's another shot of a, it's in the same canyon, but further along, you can see that the, the cut bank came pretty close to the road within a few feet. Um, and then this aerial photo right here, uh, you can see part of the pullout was actually washed away. So on your other side of the canyon, this photo right here is at the confluence of um, Lamar River and Soda Butte Creek, and it's just like tons of debris that were all there. That was really kind of interesting to see. Uh, it's not until you get out to Trout Lake Trailhead right here. So this is where the road drops off. This is the significant uh, damage to the road, uh, the first significant damage to the road as you're heading east along the Northeast Entrance Road, kind of from the tower area. Um, Here's just a couple different vantage points. You can see it's um, looking towards the northeast entrance and the, the Beartooth Mountains out there. Um, and then, you know, the final thing is uh, all the way out to the northeast entrance, we had the opportunity to, you know, see it from the air again once the water came down. And you can see that, you know, there's significant damage to that portion of the road out there. So I think that's going to wrap up the video for today. And um, I just want to say thank you from all of us here in Yellowstone. Um, you know, thanks for following this virtual video series. Thanks for celebrating Yellowstone's 150th anniversary with us. Um, and thank you for all the support and patience uh, as we continue to rebuild and reopen Yellowstone uh, as quickly as possible. So thanks and have a great day.